Well, thank you for joining us for another episode of Do You Watch What I Watch? And from time to time, we have the absolute pleasure of getting to speak with some folks who actually help make the movies that we love. And we've got two special guests with us. We've got Stephanie Serapis and Tom McCurry. And they are the writers of Jennifer, one of our favorites so far from the holiday seasons. Thus far, of course, we're talking about Jingle Bell Run. That's right. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone, too. Well, welcome to the podcast. Thank you both for taking the time out of your holiday season to chat with us. Okay, so you both co-wrote Jingle Bell Run, which is currently my number one, and it, it's probably going to stay there. It's a pretty solid number one. I'm not just saying that because you're on the podcast. I love every second of it. It checked all my boxes. So can you tell us a little bit about how this project came about? I know this isn't your first rodeo riding together. Is that correct? Correct. Um, we actually wrote Making Spirits Bright uh, and Crimes of Fashion, if you watch the Mystery Channel. Um, so this is kind of our third for Hallmark. Um, and it started out as quite a different picture. Tom, do you want to? <laughs> well, actually, it began as um, uh, more of a scavenger hunt type uh, script that involved a married couple. And uh, it took place in Chicago, in, in one city. And uh, as we, after we set up the project at Hallmark, uh, they really expanded it nationally, <laughs> which I think made it a, a much more uh, compelling idea. And uh, they left the, the married couple, bickering married couple behind and turned it into two singles and uh, created this kind of amazing race uh, uh, theme about it with all the other different um, teams competing and so forth. So it was, um, it, it, it was quite different from what we originally conceived, but uh, it's it's sort of the marvel of development, how in, in, in Hollywood and everywhere else that makes movies where uh, an idea can be transformed. And we think into a, into actually a much better one. <laughs> you know, so you hear a lot of stories yeah. about the, the development mill destroying ideas and ruining ideas, but um, ours, I think, really benefited from from a lot of the, the notes Hallmark gave us and and kind of the new sort of conceptualization of of of, of, of what Hallmark wanted and um, uh, just kind of made it more broad based, I guess, and, and not as narrowly focused. And uh, um, but yeah, uh, uh, we uh, we started out very very differently, you know, from from where you know uh, from where it ended up, and um, uh, so that's sort of one lesson maybe for your listeners and viewers that uh, uh, things can change and, and transform uh, an idea and but uh, but improve it in a way too. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you have anything to add, Stephanie, but yeah, we uh, Very really sort of transformed the idea from what it was. Very succinct, Tomas. Okay, now I can just leave the podcast and go, that's I said my piece. Yeah. Your piece he, said, he said his line. I can go back to the Rams game. No, I'm just kidding. So your creative process, I mean, how do you guys come up with your ideas? Is there give and take between the two of you? How does it all work for you guys? Did you ever have to like rock, paper, scissors over it? Like if you're battling over how a scene should go? Yeah, we threaten each other's lives. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, definitely have. We have our kind of arguments. We're like, a, we're like an old married couple sometimes. Yeah. Young married couple. But we definitely sleep on it. And then we try to kind of look at it from the other's perspective. And chances are, when you kind of take that beat, um, you know, they're right or I'm right. <laughs> it depends. It depends. But generally. Whatever Stephanie wants, I do. No, I'm just kidding. I just handle the spell check. That's it. Yeah. We generally like we'll send each other texts like, oh, I have a great idea, you know, or, or we'll be talking and, hey, I, I came up with something. Um, we're always in the cycle of coming up with ideas because as writers, you're kind of as good as your next project. Yeah. Uh, so we're constantly in that mode of not resting on our laurels and thinking of kind of the next movie. Um, so yeah, we, we're definitely always kind of thinking and, you know, thinking topically about what's happening in the world and what's happening, you know, in memes and what's happening kind of on social media. Um, so yeah. Kind of keeping yep. an eye on the zeitgeist, kind of what folks are. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's always a, it's always a trick, you know, because Hallmark certainly uh, there's a brand sort of quality to it, and and you can't sort of go too far one way or the other uh, without sort of leaving the Hallmark quality behind. So the trick is trying to come up with something fresh within that within those um, 
those parameters and uh and that's always a challenge but it's a fun challenge because because yeah. it's uh it's really exciting to sort of uh put a new spin on something that maybe this has been done before and, and kind of just look at it a whole new way like again the romance a romance during an amazing race you know uh type uh contest you know something like that with jingle bell run so um yeah, but yeah, well, it, as far as the creative process, yeah, certainly with Stephanie and I, yeah, we we're in sync a lot, so we don't we don't really bicker too too much. And uh, but when we do, it's usually uh, uh, you know uh, you know if, if one of us kind of digs their heels on in on something, and in you know okay, well then that must mean something. <laughs> you know, that must mean like I'm off in some way. If Stephanie's like, okay, right. I got to do it this way. Okay, maybe I'm missing something, and then I I sort of go, oh, okay, Stephanie, but that's that's let's do it your way. I think that's the way to go. Uh, it's 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 sort of. I think Mel Brooks had that approach. If you really dig your heels on in something, that must mean like he's wrong. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and and he realizes, okay, I'm not seeing something the other person is. And uh, and we um, yeah, so far we've been really. Uh, uh, you know, working well. So, um, and we, yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to work with Stephanie. So it's so, you know, yeah, we're not, we're not sort of, uh, the, the bickering, you know, writing partners that is the cliche. How did you guys meet? Oh, that's that? great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, Tom and my husband were friends for a long time. In fact, they worked together, um, kind of starting out in, in Hollywood. Um, and, uh, Tom came over for dinner one night and that was the first mistake you did. No, just kidding. Right. And, and after, <laughs> You know, but we could, Tom said something funny during dinner, and we kind of compounded on the idea. And after my kids went to bed, we sat out on my back porch, and in two hours, we kind of had this amazing um, idea for a spec script, uh, which we then wrote together. And that script kind of launched us to get a manager and get a producer, uh, our first producer, the Crime So Fashion. And so uh, we just kind of realized we worked well together, which is very odd. Um, it's not, it's, well, it's, it's not an easy thing to do to kind of find somebody who, again, you're kind of in sync with about jokes and going back and forth and, um, you know, working as a partner, you know, giving up that 50% and, and uh, you know, taking that 50% and kind of making it all mesh. Um, so, you know, we, we kind of learned we work well together. Uh, thank goodness for that dinner. That's yes, that's right. And thank goodness I cracked a joke. And then and that's good. That right. Yeah. If you'd been dull that night, who knows where you'd be? But in, in a bad mood that uh, dinner, I think you never would. You never would have seen Jingle Bell Run. You know. Oh my gosh. We just hate. But um, no, no, yeah, no. Again, it's. Um, yeah, it's tricky. I mean, at the same time, you, you know, you don't want to settle, you know, if, if one one of us has an idea that, you know, the other doesn't get or whatever, we, 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 we do sort of fight for our, our points of view, but never to the point where, OK, we're going to just, you know, stop writing the script over it. And uh, um, it is it is, as Stephanie said, it is kind of like a married couple. And uh, in that respect where it's like, OK, is is this really worth, you know, this much fight? <laughs> you know, right. and, and is you know we're 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 getting too caught in the weeds uh, and lost in the weeds and, and not seeing the bigger picture. So so I think it is it is almost like a relationship. You have to sort of uh, give and take in that respect. That's and you try to take as much as possible. No, I'm just kidding. There's a hallmark. You, have a little you, know, you give as much. Hurt as and you just try to do it. That's right. She hands in. You know, I kind of fix it without her knowing. No, um, but uh, no, it's. Um, but no, it, it, you know, uh, yeah, it's it's been a it's been a wonderful um, a partnership and relationship, and we, yeah, and we just want to keep keep it going because we yeah. we enjoy each other's creative process so much. So uh, and and we're working. I guess we can follow. I'm 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 kind of running the podcast. I'm sort of saying, you know, we're working in a school. Oh, please do. I'm just listening. Can you know you can ask me that question, or I can just step all over you. Uh, and go for it. We've had it on our list, but you can go ahead and go organic. Yeah. What are y'all working on next? What's the next? Uh, well, uh, we're working on another Christmas project, uh, which I guess we really can't get into since that's sort of we're not supposed to talk about it too much. But always have to keep it kind of under wraps. Sort of. It's supposed to be us guys. Nobody else is getting. No one else is listening. And all of a sudden, you get a call from the head of the Hallmark tomorrow. What did you guys say? Yeah. No. Yeah, we don't want to get in trouble. We don't want to be on the naughty list at Hallmark. That's for sure. Yeah, we're we're working on actually we're working on a mystery project for Hallmark and also uh, a Christmas project uh, for you know, for another company that that works with Hallmark. So so we're we're sort of running the gamut, and I think that's kind of the fun um, 
thing with Hallmark is that they do different genres. So you do the rom-coms, you do the comedies, and then you do the mysteries, uh, the light, you know, romantic comedy mysteries, I guess you'd call them. Uh, but uh, yeah, it really, as a, as, a, as a writer, it really gives you a lot of experience and it's, it's fun to sort of uh, shift genres. And um, yeah, am, am I too mansplaining too much, Stephanie? I don't want to yeah, we also yeah we also have a couple of of finished scripts with Hallmark um, right now that are hopefully going to be, you know, they're going to say yes to. Mm -hmm. uh, they would be some fun ones. Kind of one is more mystery tinged, um, you know, and the other one is just kind of straight Christmas. So um, fingers crossed on those two. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Definitely in the Christmas realm, and it's perfect timing given that. We're in the season. Always easier to kind of write when you're hearing the Christmas music. You know, all of the decorations are up. You have hot cocoa going. It's, yeah, it we're, we're staying busy. That's great. Yeah, it's so I mean, I'm, I'm sure it, ha have, it probably varies with every project, but if you're writing, let's say now, presumably for something that would air next Christmas, I mean, what's the timeline? Do you turn it in now or do you wait until after the holidays and then they have edits? Like, is there, I'm sure there's a back and forth along that process. It's a, sometimes can be a longer uh, development process. Um, I guess it kind of depends on, you know, uh, if we've nailed the, the concept for the executives, if there's any kind of changes that they want, uh, you know, a la what we kind of went into with Jingle Bell Run. Um, it, you know, it depends on on each project. You know, we always start with an outline. You know, then we kind of get a little bit deeper into like a ten page document, and then we go to script. Um, so I don't really know when they plan on shooting the one that we that we have. A lot of the Christmas movies are actually shot in July, mm -hmm. uh, August, September. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, and you could always tell the ones that were kind of maybe shot in February, um, that cycle, because you, you know, can kind of see the real snow versus, you know, the uh, manufactured and the, the condensation from the mouse. And, uh, but yeah, we, no indication. We're kind of still, uh, we just kicked it off. We just signed the contract not too long ago. So, um, you know, very, very beginning stages, but going to be a fun so one. exciting, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sure it will be. I'm but sure. usually, yeah, usually if you write something, I mean, the, the great, I guess with Crimes of Fashion, we we sold the idea and it just took a while for it to get going um, for some, I'm, I'm not sure why, but but we ended up, um, you know, writing it, uh, I think in early 2023, and then they ended up shooting it late, you know, late that year. And uh, yeah, with, with Jingle Bell Run, we started writing it, um, I guess, in 2023 as well, uh, summer of 2023, uh, fall of 2023, and then it rolled over to uh, to this year. So um, so yeah, I mean, usually there's like a year, you know, six months to a year lag, but that's the beauty, beautiful thing about Hallmark too. I mean, in, in uh, other other studios, other production companies, uh, often you you... You know, you write a script and it could just sit on the shelf for 20 years. Uh, the great thing about Hallmark is that, you know, it doesn't really take long from writing the script to seeing your credit. And that's uh, that's the wonderful thing about uh, about Hallmark. So and hopefully their, their Hallmark is listening now. It's like, OK, keep giving it work because we love we love your development process. It's so fast compared to to what it typically is. And um, uh, I think that's uh, that's one of the wonderful things about it, too, in addition to just. Uh, this is just in, kind of a segue, but um, writing uh, Hallmark movies is always challenging because you have to make something compelling and, and generate conflict without using sex, violence, or foul language. Right. And uh, it's almost like you're writing in the 30s and the 40s uh, back in the golden age of Hollywood, which is which is one of my favorite eras. And uh, that's uh, it's a wonderful challenge, and it's 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 really something I think most writers uh, should do because you can rely on those crutches, and they sort of take a substitute for good writing. Um, and uh, here, yeah, with Jingle Bell Run, here we just we just uh, weren't able to work with all of those um, those tools, and and I, I think we still came up with a, a fun movie as uh, as you thankfully uh, uh, agree with us uh, over. But uh, yes. uh, but yeah, so that's uh, that's another wonderful thing about working with uh, with Hallmark in that respect. Uh, just you know, you can you know it teaches you sort of as a writer how to how to come up with uh, with with compelling scenes without uh, using all of those things that uh, R-rated movies depend on. I should say. Sure. 
That's no, that makes a ton of sense. And I asked about the timeline mainly because we're in Nashville. My dad was a songwriter, so I'm familiar in that world of you write a song, you get excited about it, and then somebody might even be interested in it and they'll hold it for years and then they may never record it. So I, that's interesting to hear about the Hallmark's turnaround time. That makes a lot of sense. It's so like if Hallmark likes you once they once you're kind of in the family that they're pretty loyal to the people that they're loyal to. So that's that is intriguing to me too from a viewer standpoint to know that okay, I can see another movie from Stephanie and Tom next year and like it's just it makes it more exciting. They really they function kind of as old Hollywood. Um, you know, the, the studios of old where they cultivate a stable of actors, they cultivate writers. That is very rare um, in this in, in this business anymore uh, for that to happen. So hats off to them because um, they do an amazing job in terms of marketing. I mean, I don't know if, if Harvard Business School has studied them, but, but they really should. Um, you, know, I, I, you know, the cruise that just happened in the, you know, upcoming Kansas City um, Christmas festival, uh, and they they really do take care of uh, the people who write for them, you know, the actors. So it's a wonderful family to be a part of, and we're so honored, really. Yes, Let's take it yeah. back to Jingle Bell Run because yes, I got to know. Jennifer and I loved this movie start to finish. We thought that this was just so fun. The thing that I really appreciated about it, and Jennifer, I'll let you tell them what you appreciate. I just loved how well paced this thing was. Sometimes our criticism can be that the middle third of these movies can kind of just drag a little bit. There was no dragging in this. It was just so well punctuated with action and with development of the relationship and all of that. We just really thought that it was well paced. Jennifer, what was your highlight? Because I want to know from Stephanie and Tom, favorite scene from Jingle Bell Run. So while Jennifer tells you her favorite part of the whole movie, Think about what your favorite scene was, because I got to know. My favorite is just the quippy dialogue. I'm a fast talker. Gilmore Girls is my favorite series on TV, so I'm used to fast-paced dialogue. And having these two leads, Andrew Walker and Ashley Williams, be able to relay your script in that quippy fashion, I could have listened to three more movies of it. I mean, just give me more of it. So that was really what struck a chord with me. And I am a big reality TV nut. I don't really watch Amazing Race as much, but Big Brother, Survivor, all those competition shows I'm here for. So this was like checking all my boxes before we even watched it. So I was so glad that it exceeded my expectations. But yeah, what was your all's favorite scene? We got to know. Me too. It might be you're, you're, you're putting your feet. It's not the spot here. Wow, we it's like it's a having to choose okay. which, which child you prefer or something. A one up. I have a kind of a tie. I love the Western dance, um, yeah. and the conversation um, afterwards. Oh, okay, and also the the window display. Um, because the the scene where they were getting to know each other, um, I had a shout out to my sister who was a teacher. Um, and so that was kind of my love letter to her. So that kind of holds a special part, you know, special part of my heart. We, you know, we definitely dip from the well of using our family, um, our friends as names, as... Uh, eggs. Yeah. yeah, I'm constantly listening to my friends' stories going, I'm going to lodge that here and it's going to be up here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, it's a hard one because there were there were a lot of favorites. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's almost hard to choose from. Uh, I guess, like Stephanie, I, I just loved uh, the dance sequence uh, mm. uh, in Texas. Uh, it just had everything, had sort of humor, you know, pathos, you know, uh, mm -hmm. emotionally stirring romance. I mean, it was it was just a wonderful sequence. But as far as just, um, you know, I, I like the laugh. So I just love the, uh, you know, um, you know, the, the nutcrackers, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, Wes and, uh, and Nash kind of, you know, doing their their nutcracker. You know, you know that is, you know, you know sque squeezing the, the, you know, trying to trying to break the nutcrackers with their uh, with their hands. And, yes. I also love, I also love, you know, just trying to one up each other. Um, and, and I think also, uh, uh, the chariots of fire scene at the end where she's like running in slow motion and, and ringing the bell. And it just, it was just a, a lot of fun kind of, uh, you know, kind of meta kind of humor there and, uh, uh, and stirring too. So I guess those were my favorite uh, moments, but yeah, I mean, the, the whole movie, as you say, I think worked really well because it was, um, 
yeah, you know, sort of the conception was kind of built for a fast pace because we had so many things to service. We had the relationships, we had so many challenges. And I think it, it really lended itself well to a, to a movie where sometimes, you know, you see a movie and there's just not enough story. And it really dies in the middle because there's really not enough going on. There's not enough plot development. And we just had so much going on, you know, not just between uh, Wes and Avery and the two lead characters, but with all the other characters and their own their own arcs and and then all the challenges on top of that. And then Keegan and Dirk and... And, and a love story. Yeah, that, and love story. Who's gonna, going to win? Uh, people being eliminated. So, uh, it's, which it was like plot development there. And uh, uh, it was, um, yeah. So I, I think that, that I think elevated uh, the movie in a way, uh, uh, and and sort of, but it was it was very difficult to sometimes put all that together in a script. So so we were as, and and then dealing with notes from different parties. You know, how do we kind of service everything? But I think it all really, you know, with the help of our execs and and producers, it really turned out well. I, I would absolutely. I have to ask. At what point do you know that Andrew Walker and Ashley Williams are going to be the leads? Because Andrew Walker's character really wants this promotion for mega juice a juice company and he has in real life a juice company so i didn't know if that it was a chicken or the egg thing was that like a, oh andrew is the guy let's make him really excited about juice or was it just that serendipitous how did that come to be actually uh we did not know when we turned the script in and found out that we got a green light uh, we still didn't know who was going to star in this. Um, it wasn't until they kind of went into pre-production that we, um, you know, heard from the producers who was going to be in it, Ashley and Andrew. And we were very excited about that matchup um, because they have such great chemistry. Um, and uh, but no, that was completely written. Um, I I. I yeah, that was kind of a nice little coincidence. Um, I love it. So, yes, it was with bait or something. Yes, wow. especially with the juice angle. Yeah, the juice. Uh, yeah. That was, yeah, you know that was like really weird, but a uh, good a good omen. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's good juju. Juice juju. So it's like. Psst. So are either of you fans of reality TV, or was this just sort of you dipped into that realm just for this project? Um, I'm not a huge watcher, but I did watch Survivor, um, Amazing Race, um, you know, perfect things that I could watch with my kids, not exactly a Bravo with my kids. Um, wow. but the, yeah, this was, um, again, the, we intended to write about something very differently. And then the producers kind of said, Hey, why don't we make it an amazing race? And then it was like, okay, great. We get this world. Um, but I don't know. Tom, are you a big... Um, yeah, I, you know, that's the weird thing, too. Yeah, as, as Stephanie said, this kind of started out as something very small scale. Uh, and then and then they made it into a big reality TV uh, concept, which kind of you know, made it a better idea, frankly. Uh, but yeah, no, like Stephanie, I watch The Amazing Race sometimes. But, uh, um, you know, just, uh, yeah, not, you know... Um, you know, not a lot. So it was, it was sort of... All our auditions. Sort of we're doing, like, research on... Or anything. Oh, so yeah, Tom, we should. He did. Yeah, we should. You should be on the Amazing Race. I mean, you can wear the jacket the book. from the movie. Exactly, wearing our uh, our jingle but blood. Deadly. You can actually order your own jacket. Google Jingle Bell Run jacket, and because I just ordered Tom and I one, great Christmas present. <laughs> Oh, but just to have an artist sent the link to my family. I want Okay, yeah. right. I can't wait for a satin jacket. You know, and we've often said Hallmark knows what they're doing when they're running a business. We have been so surprised when we watch these things that some of those items aren't popping up in like a little QR code at the bottom of the screen. Like, order your own Jingle Bell Run jacket. Go out here to do it now. I mean, that just seems like a natural business opportunity. That's a great idea, actually. Yeah. Copyright. Share the link in our YouTube this and podcast description for anybody else who wants to order a jacket too, because yeah, I, I'm very excited about that idea. Um, that's yeah, that's, that's so wonderful about the brand of Hallmark, because yeah, just it it, it, it yeah, it, it is lends itself to merchandising and 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 everything else. So it just becomes uh, it just permeates the the country, which is great. Uh, right. And uh, and I would love your thoughts. And this is sort of a broader question. 
do you think it is about this genre that has really increased in popularity? I mean, it really has become a cultural touchstone, especially at this time of the year. What do you think it is about this genre, these movies that just really resonates with a growing number of people, especially at this time of the year? I think it goes back to what Tom was saying about kind of sex violence. Um, you know, that there's you can find that all day kind of on on, on cable. Um, but when you want to kind of feel something, that's where you turn to is Hallmark um, for romance, you know, for just the way people talk respectfully to one another. I mean, honestly, if everybody could live in a Hallmark movie, I think the world would be such a a better place uh, because even when they have a disagreements, it's not, it doesn't resort in a screaming match and a, a belittling situation. It it's, it's done with respect. Um, and again, going back to when you struggle to find things to watch with your younger kids, um, that is a good portrayal of relationships, um, not only between a man, a woman, between men, you know, women, men, parents, you know, sisters, brothers, um, it, it's it's just fe leaves you feeling warm, fuzzy. Tis the season. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think Stephanie's correct. I think it's escapism from, mm -hmm. you know, the, the world, which is seems to be getting crazier by the minute. And uh, uh, but I think the good thing about Hallmark, though, yeah, I, I don't want us to make it appear as if Hallmark, um, you know, makes us write these movies with with rose colored glasses. So, I mean, we you know, they, they do. Uh, do a great job at Hallmark, making sure each character has their their inner conflicts, their arcs. I mean, it it is you know, you know, psychologically realistic. You know the way these characters behave, uh, the way we write them, and I think that's a good thing too. It grounds it. I think in a way, maybe that's something more you know fizzier and fluffier uh, wouldn't be grounded because uh, uh, the characters are behaving in in real ways. And uh, even if again, as 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 we discussed, yeah, there's not a lot of sex violence or foul language. Uh, and, and I think um, it's it's like the best of both worlds. It's real, but it's not it's not um, so kind of uh, edgy and gritty and and off putting that uh, you don't want to watch it. Very cool. I have them. That's One that's my philosophy of life. No, um, I love it. You can fish the class at Harvard about the Hallmark. <laughs> now I'm going to go off and watch Yellowstone and kind of burst everything I said. No, but uh, the Yellowstone podcast. I told you. Stop it. Stop trying to make Yellowstone happen. No, Land of Man. I think she's going to have to watch. Yes. No, uh, but um, no, but I think that's what's beautiful about Hallmark. Yeah, it, it sort of hits all the beats. I mean, I think the, the saying goes with Hallmark. It's like. Um, you can do, uh, or you could, you know, people from eight to eighty can watch it. You know, mm. It's all four quadrants. Sure. I think that's um, that's why I think it's another of its appeal. You know, uh, other shows, you know, as we mentioned, Yellowstone are much, I think, a little more narrow in their appeal to to various people. So, um, yeah, I think uh, any any anything else, Stephanie? I uh, no. Nope. Now that I'm see on these podcasts, you know, we can just ramble for about six hours and you're stuck. I love it. I mean, I, I would listen yeah. to it. If it's a business meeting, you say, okay, that's it, you're over. Okay. And and end the call. Um, but um, yeah, I think well, we do have one more question if we can ask, and it's not related to your movie at all. It's just to get you to know you a little bit more personally. And it's not your social security number or anything. Sorry, like that. But what is from your favorite holiday gift you received when you were little? What sticks out to you the most, and why? Oh my gosh. Three. It's my dollhouse. I was like eight. I was like a pivotal age. I really wanted this Fisher Price dollhouse, mm. and Santa brought it. Now, my great grandma brought me the accessories for the dollhouse before Santa brought the dollhouse. So that was a little bit of a spoiler alert back then. But still, I mean, my parents still have it in their attic, and I'm going to pass it on to my children. So that for me was an all timer. What about you guys? Oh, gosh. I honestly, I think it was maybe a, a David Soul 45. <laughs> Murray Gertz. Hey. I, I, don't give up on us, baby. I love it. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember myself. Uh, uh, maybe some Star Wars. You know, when the when the uh, yeah. like Star Wars toys came out, that was the biggest blow for me. Because I think I remember the movie came out and like the toys weren't available like for like a year or something. Well, that's unfortunate. You know? yeah, that's, they didn't they didn't horrible. ramp up the merchandising, so everyone was like, oh, you know, when are you gonna get the you know the, the you know the land speeder and and you know Luke and Darth Vader. So I think that was kind of the biggest thrill for me. But um, boy, yeah, that's well, that's a that's a that's a tough question. There's a lot of I'm sorry, a lot of, I mean, such a heavy hitter. I know. I'm sorry. Probing. 
probing question. And we shouldn't be talking about Star Wars too. That's like another brand. So yeah. Oh yeah. Right. We'll just yeah. This- I'll just say I received. I must have received something from Hallmark that was wonderful. So that's. All right. Yep. She got your Hallmark ornament for signing up for Hallmark Plus. Then we need to do our reveal. Up. Exactly. Another You're gonna have to circle back on that at a later time. But in the meantime, <laughs> Tom, Stephanie. Congratulations. This movie was just so much fun and I think was really a bright spot, not just for us, but for a lot of people this holiday season. So Mm -hmm. thank you for bringing the script and we are so excited to see new things from you guys. Keep doing what you're doing and we will be here to champion you all the way through. Thank you. That's right. You just a buddy where they can connect with you online, Twitter, X, whatever it's called now, all the socials. Tell, Tell people where to find you guys. Uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram as Steph Serapis. Uh, Yeah, I'm on Facebook and uh, Twitter and uh, Blue Sky as Tom McCurry. So uh, I should be on Instagram. So I'm I'm falling behind, Stephanie. But uh, I'll I'll try to. I'll sort of. With all the social. Impossible. My list guy count this week because I was like, uh oh, they're gonna I want the same username. I I gotta claim it and somebody else get it. Right. It's it's tough on these social media streams. It's like there's like too many, you know, and it's like you're you're spending all your time Why? kind of you know, promoting yourself and not writing. But uh actually, yeah, but we're uh yeah, we're we're on we're online so you can reach us and hopefully with, with, with nice comments. And even if they're bad comments. Only, only tag them on the nice stuff, guys. Sorry. I'll still answer you about negativity. I'll still answer if you if you say I stink, but uh, well, thank you uh, for having us. It was really our pro- pleasure to talk with you today. Well, we will. Yes, I appreciate your help. You know, we will be on the lookout for new projects for you. And like I said, keep them coming. Have a good one. Yeah. Well, rep, be right yeah. continually this season. If you missed it on the first run, it'll be on Hallmark repeatedly. If you have Friendly, it's on there. So um, as always, we're going to tell you guys, may your days be merry and bright.